Okay. So I need a charm, which means I need money. And I need a poison. Wait a minute, who am I supposed to give this bottle cap to? She mentioned someone would like it for their collection, but I don't remember who. Hmm. Anyway, uh, okay, so where do I get this charm? Let me save it. Let's talk to Bance. No, she's not gonna have anything to sell. Nickel bar isn't open yet. Uh, Rhea, have you spotted anything I could use, maybe? Hey there. Hi. You know anything about the mortuary? I don't know a whole lot about the building itself, but I know of some of the things that have gone on there in the past. At one point, there was a corpse that would be delivered every evening, and then be gone by the morning, the door unlocked from the inside. <laughs> this happened for a while, until the mortician realized that it was somebody pretending to be dead in order to loot the corpses within. Wow. The next night, they locked him in a coffin, only letting him out when they returned in the morning. He never tried it again. <laughs> It's also where General Oron f uh, hid out when he was accused of treason. Treason. They killed him in the building, saying that he was going to end up back in there after a trial no matter what. So they may as well deal with him while he was already inside. It was also where Thorovia the Translucent was apprenticed before she became the High Priestess of... Cor... Coravil? Or I don't know what that was. Alright, see ya. Hmm. Hmm. Anything new from you? Nope. Let me try giving the bottle cap to everybody. Nope. Nope. Because I can't remember who wanted it. Someone has a bottle cap collection. Not worth anything to me, sorry. Fair enough. Alright. Oh wait, two plaza! Okay, there's an entire right place here. Well, in that case, let's go. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, this is turning out to be a far bigger adventure game than I thought it would be. I was expecting it to be maybe like a half hour or something. It's looking like it might be a couple hours, though. I'm already about an hour and, like, 15 minutes into it. Oh, great, another name I can't really pronounce. And another name I can't really pronounce. Yuktor. And... O... Ow, ow, ow. Anyway, let's look at the other stuff first. An empty bottle of... Jellyard's shit mead. I knew this stuff well. It only burns a little at first, but seven minutes after the cork is popped, it turns into the foulest, most toxic drink imaginable. If you're unlucky enough to have drunk it all by then, it'll make sure you don't wake up for at least a day. It leaves you feeling like a demon has pissed down your throat, but is good for forgetting things. Sometimes this liquid filth is the only thing guaranteed to let me sleep at night. Well, apparently she's used to the, uh, the feeling of many things pissing down her throat. Both goat piss and demon piss. Interesting. Can I seriously examine this puddle? Wow, there's a lot of detail put into this world. I can examine the puddle. The puddle on the ground appears to be congealed blood, but reeks of vomit. No doubt whoever puked here was in a bad way. But on the positive side, they probably don't remember it. Ugh. There are plenty of drinks that can do this to someone for sale around here, but nobody knows what they taste like. Not because nobody has ever tried them, but because nobody ever recalls doing so. That's disgusting. It sounds like they drank this. The Juilliard shitmead? Yeah. Rune. 
In the middle of the street is a large stone circle designed for people to have a place where they can cast spells. Here somebody has cast what looks to be a simple cantrip. No doubt some bird lost his life in order to supply the feathers needed for a little love enchantment or something of that nature. The spell is much more complex than the one next to it. The arcane rune appears to be... Thauvian? Thavian? Thuvian? Thavian in nature and the presence of blood suggests powerful, dangerous magic. Whoever had performed this ritual knew what they were doing. Such performances in the street often attract an audience of curious onlookers, eager to see the results. More than once, this has resulted in them becoming victims to some eldritch fiend summoned up by one of the less noble invokers. Hmm. That's a flyer? I just thought it was like a stain on the ground. It's a flyer for one of the temples in this city. Several decades ago, the gods grew tired of hearing the countless prayers and pleas of their believers and decided to bestow priests with actual powers. <laughs> this meant that the people would harass the priests and not the gods, and the gods could get on with the cavorting, fighting, feasting, and orgies they were so fond of. What followed was the rapid descent of religion from guidance and prayer into a commercial venue that provided services beyond those of the mortal realm. Priests, once poor and humble, are now richer than kings. Hmm. Shrub. Wait, how is there a shrub growing out of the ground? I mean, it's growing out of stone. The bright foliage of the Sodricia shrub stays green all year round. It is lovely to see greenery in the middle of the city, a refreshing change from the flagstone and filth. It's just a pity that the leaves are filled with a deadly poison. Ooh, hello. An even bigger pity that nobody explained this to the now dead animal lying beside this particular bush. Aww, that's a dead animal. What is it? The corpse of a dead vote lies next to the shrub, stiff and covered in flies. The stench is thick enough that it leaves not merely a smell, but also a flavor in the air that can be tasted on the tongue. No doubt the aroma will attract some hungry scavenger who will feed on the carcass, and thus poison itself as well in the process. Well, can I take some? Need to make sure I don't chew my fingernails now. That's one toxic plant. Hmm. Alright, well I guess I can either eat it directly or drink it in a tea using the kettle on my stove. Now I just need the charm. And I'm good to go. Alright, what have we got here? To Temple District. Wow, there's a lot of places to visit. I'm going to do everything else before talking to these people. Man, playing an adventure game that doesn't have any voice acting is really hard on your throat. I was... I started out really fine, but I can already feel my throat getting used because I've essentially been constantly talking non-stop for like an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, it's... It's hard. Uh, post. And there's a lot of text. A lot of detail. I'm impressed. But it's also a lot to talk. <laughs> The symbol on this banner is from one of the major temples in the city. These gaudy emblems let pedestrians know that the temple is nearby, ready to compensate their generous donations with possible happiness. Hmm. This looks like a nasty spider face demon thing. A butt-ugly face, the sort of thing artists of the post-beauty movement love to sculpt. Personally, I miss the time when artists spent all of their energy sculpting naked people dancing and singing and fucking. That's the kind of thing I like to see as I walk around a city. Modern art has too many trolls and not enough tits for my liking. <laughs> I only damage faces of the living. Fair enough. Banner is... F oh yeah, that's just the same as this, the post and the banner. Same thing. Same thing. All right, I think that's it, aside from these two people. Okay. Let's talk to Yiktor. Looks like a minotaur... alligator thing. Hey there, Moira. How are you, lass? Hello, Yiktor. I'm tired and cranky. Nice to see you, though. Ha, huh, the mercenary's life. I don't miss it, you know, although we did have some good times together. It's a pity I don't remember much of it. I love it when you tell the stories of our old adventures. There must nice nicer adventures in the stories than they were at the time. I suppose so. We really should catch up again at some point. I haven't seen you at the Nickel Bar for ages. 
I have been busy. Let me know the next time you're heading down there, and I'll try to take the time out of, uh, out to come and chat with you. If you can stomach the far-fetched stories of washed-up mercs, that is. Hey, I'm one of them washed-up mercs. Those far-fetched stories are about, remember? You're far too young to be washed up, lass. You just got yourself into a fix that you... Uh, you just got yourself into a fix that you... That got you jaded before your time. Anyway, enough thinking of the past. How can I help you today? Why did you quit being a merc, Yator? Yiktor? You don't seem like the type to take a quiet job as a city guard. Nobody lasts in the merc's game in the merc game forever, lass. You see one too many friends die and realize that it could be you next. Suddenly a life watching a patch of root of road doesn't seem so bad after all. When did you decide to give it up? After only half of our company came back from the job at Whitebridge, I pulled out of the company and got myself a simple guarding job. Always toyed with the idea of going back to being a merc on the quiet days, but then you came back from whatever it, from whatever it was you got yourself into back then. Wouldn't tell anybody what had happened, just set yourself to drinking whatever would take the memories away. I guess it worked real well, lass, except you spent all the coin you made from the job trying to forget it, and then some. That you, uh, that could have been me, you know. After that, I realized that this was the best place for me now. Do you know what happened? What drove me to drinking? I certainly... Uh, I can't remember a thing about it, and my journal is vague at best. No idea, lass. You wouldn't talk to only... Uh, you wouldn't talk to any of us about it. You looked like hell, though, I'll tell you that. Like you bore the fate of the entire world on your shoulders. I don't blame you for wiping your memories of, or, of whatever it was you did. I'll have you know. Nobody should come back from a job looking anything like that. Maybe I just cracked, and the idea of killing somebody got too much for me. No, lass, I've seen you under pressure. You were as tough as any of us. It would have taken something huge to shake you up. Whatever you did, whatever it was you saw out there, it was bad. Can you tell me one of the old stories? <laughs> Alright, just one. Did I ever tell you about the time we took on the Reaver in Azura Shaft? Azura Shaft? Not that I remember. Well, yourself, me, old Talks with None, and our captain, Thalia, or Talia, strolled into the thing's lair without a care in the world. It was hard to not be confident. We'd never once had a challenge we couldn't best. Taking on a single beast was such a joke that we put off heading over there until a Sunday afternoon, three hours before we were due to catch our ship home. I don't know what that thing did to us, but the moment we laid eyes on it, the four of us were locked in a sort of fever, some form of madness. I went to look around me, and instead of seeing the place as a whole, my mind buzzed and swarmed with each of the little details. Ooh! That's the... like the magic that Emba... or what's her name, Emba? Just showed me? In the middle of the cavern was a beam of light, where the sun shone down into the darkness, and in this light every element took on its own importance. All at once, I found myself trying to see every blade of grass, every pebble, root, insect, every tiny detail. I tried to compare each of the hairs on your head, tried to make out the meanings of the tattoos, scroll, scrawled all over talks with none, tried to count my own thoughts. But I could never actually focus on any of these things, always jumping from one to another, making some strange connection, then jumping back again. The four of us lay there for five hours, caught in a swoon, before you finally broke the spell, killed the creature yourself, and dragged the rest of us back to reality. My jaw and teeth ached like the hells. I must have been clenching them for hours, and my brain was exhausted, but I was glad to be out of there. How did I break the spell, though? Huh, well, according to yourself, you set your mind to examining me in that minute de detail of that stupor, and found that I was engaged in examining the shape of your backside. <laughs> <laughs> you always were a little fiery when one of us tried to get cozy with you, lass, and I guess that triggered something in your brain. I don't mind, though. It saved our hides that day. Here, buy yourself a beer with this. You deserve at least that for saving us back then. Ooh, thank you. I don't know how much you gave me, but I'll check after I talk. Oh my god, my throat. Ah. <sighs> Can I go through to the temple district? 
Have you got yourself a temple pass yet? You know I've never had a need for temples, Yktor. I know, lass, but rules are rules. Why are there passports for the temple district in the first place? The priests want to keep the unsavory sorts out, so they need visitors to go through a screening first. But priests are some of the most unsavory sorts around. Aye, but that doesn't stop them wanting to keep the atheists, politicians, and scientists out. Wow, okay. If you get caught in there without a pass, it'll be bad news for the both of us, lass. Well, it's nice to see the priests are being pieces of shit. As usual. Hmm. And, uh, I think I think this stuff about the mortuary is more f intended for before you go to the mortuary. Let me try it, though. Don't really know much about it. Actually, no, there is some detail here. Alright. All I know is that it was ordered built by one of the Patri... Uh, Patricians? Lady, uh, fuck. Uh, who's one of a number of structures she ordered built after returning from traveling around the continent. Interesting. Thanks. Uh, oh, damn, I can't do that again. Well, well. It was ordered built by someone. Where can I get a pass from? I can issue them, but in order to do so, I need applicants to pass a questionnaire and make a donation. For you, I'll bypass the questionnaire, but I need to show the receipt to the temple at the end of my shift. If they see... Oh, I think I misspelled. If they see I issued a... Oh, God damn it! How much is the pass? Ten coppers, lass. Alright, I suppose I'll see what I can do about getting some coin together. Anything you need help with, Yuktor? Well, if you got the time, you could run a little errand for me, lass. Sure. I'm always happy to help you out, Yuktor. Well, would you mind going over to Bance's Saul in the market and picking up a talisman for me? I'd get it myself, but I'm on a shift and I might not make it over there in time tonight. Sure, Yktor, I can do that for you. Great, make sure you tell her it's for me. Will do, be back in a moment. Take care. I, lass, and yourself. Alright, I've got one gobber. I thought Bance or Bence or whatever her name is, didn't she not have anything to sell though? Maybe she's got it on reserve for him? I don't know. I right, talked to Ow 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 Yes. Hello there. Good morning. A pleasure to see a friendly face. Ugh, God. A pleasure to see a friendly face in the middle of the city. It's like finding a treasure in the midst of a dark cove uh cave. What brings you out to the square today? I am something, uh Bard, whom nobody knows yet, but I hope to soon make a name for myself. Oh, really? What are you working on at the moment? I am penning a work, a work which I believe all people will be able to relate to, from the common serf to a mighty king. And what is this poem called? I have named this ballad Piss. <laughs> oh, hello, self-reference. What an awful name! Who'd call a poem that? Well, I suppose I would, seeing as I have. But you see, that's the expected reaction. You hear that somebody has called a poem Piss, and you instantly think, that's the worst name possible. I'm a poet. I like it when people say, what an awful name, because that's the only reason I'd ever call a poem Piss. That sort of reaction is exactly what I aspire to create with the title. Anyway, how can I help you? No, really, why call a poem Piss? You know the feeling late at night when you are when you are desperate to urinate? When your bed is comfortable and warm and the rest of the world is cold and you want to stay in bed? I know that feeling well. That's how writing poetry is for me sometimes. I'm so full of ideas, absolutely bursting with them, and I really want to shore them, to share them with the world. But they're comfortable inside my head, and to pen them into the into verse is like getting out of the warm blankets. I know I'm not going to be able ugh, I know I'm not going to be able to rest until I've gotten out of the warm comfortable place, but I still put it off. That really frustrates me sometimes. I know it is my own laziness holding me back, but I still lay there desperate to piss, but unwilling to get up. So in a sense, I guess my poem is about writing poetry, even though it's about taking a leak. Okay. That makes sense. 
Can you recite part of the poem for me? It's not ready yet, sorry. Surely you can still show me a small part. Oh no, certainly not. A poem is like a meal. You don't serve it up until all the parts are cooked. If I served you pasta without the sauce, it'd be bland and uninspiring. Similarly, if I presented you with, with sauce without any pasta to rest upon, you would find it unsatisfying and without body. As with a feast for the mouth, a feast for the ears must be whole before it is tasted. Okay, fair enough, too. Um... You sure speak in similes a lot. A poet who speaks plainly is is like... That's another simile. Anytime you say, it's like, it's a simile. A po oh, goddamn, I forgot it automatically goes. Uh, the strike of inspiration can be as unexpected as the assault of the enemy. Being unprepared for either is a sure way to fail. You mean you've always practiced poetry so that you were always ready to write poetry? Uh, you're always practicing poetry so that you're always ready to write poetry? Yes, although it sounds so common and buried in logic when you state it like that. Would you like some help with the poem? You want to help write it? I don't know that I want somebody else working on my poem. A poem is like a letter to an old friend. Of course, another simile. Because nobody else has that exact same relationship with that person, it's impossible for anybody but myself to write that poem. Anybody else trying to write it will end up doing it all wrong. No, I mean, do you need some inspiration? Hmm, let me think. I guess if you could bring me something relevant to the essence of the poem, perhaps. I never had a muse or anything. I usually just write whatever comes into my head. Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Ooh. You would probably have a good idea for an assassin's motif. Alright, done that, done that, done that. Tell me about the mortuary first. Of course, my lady. It was built by the master architect Sher Alfia, one of her first notable structures. She went on to design the town hall, the ghost bridge, and the palace. Uh, the palace to Avir before she retired. <laughs> it really is a testament to her early career. The figure on top was a sign of the style that would become a trademark of her structures. The bioluminescent lighting in the eyes was the first time that sort of lighting had ever been used here. She brought the discovery back from her travels. It set the foundation for the lighting that is the standard all throughout Kamiya today. Interesting. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. It was a pleasure to have been of service, my lady. Any idea for a good assassin's motif? If I were an assassin, I'd surely write a message on a card in the victim's blood and leave it behind. You. You thought of that that quickly? Y you've thought of this before. Really, what would you write? Probably... Kolo... Kolo... I way, which means my task is completed in the gnarl, whatever, very poetic, but of course. Alright, farewell. May your travels be filled with wonder. Alright, let's go grab that charm for Yiktor. Yiktor! I guess I'll talk to... What was his name? Start with a G. I'll talk to the assassin cat man on the way back. Hello, Bance. I'm here to pick up a talisman for Yiktor. Oh, right. It came in this morning. Be love and tell him I'm sorry it took so long, will you? I will. Farewell. All right, let's talk to Gert. You can leave a message in blood on a card. I asked a poet what he'd do, and that's what his answer was. A nice, dramatic idea, but what would I write on it? He says he would use Kolo Aifue, or however you pronounce that, I don't know. Interesting, thanks. I appreciated the advice. Here, thanks for the help. I'll think about what you said. Let me know if you have any other ideas. Alright, two coppers. Making progress.
Here you go, Yktor. Bance asked me to tell you she's sorry it took so long to get here. Thanks, lass. You're an angel. Here, let me pay you for your time. Can I ask you why you need a talisman of protection, Yktor? I'm pretty sure you're capable of protecting yourself. It's not for me, lass. It's for my little Karen. Your daughter needs one? She wants to be a mercenary, Moira. And she's 15 now. I don't want her going out and getting hurt. Huh. <laughs> she wants to be just like her father. That's so cute. No, lass. She wants to be just like you. What? Why would she want to be anything like me? She's heard me tell stories about you since she was a baby. Karen idolizes you, lass. I'm not sure why she'd look up to me, though. Because I do, Moira. Oh, that's... Thank you, Yktor. Make sure she stays safe. I'm doing everything I can. And now I know how my mother felt when I left on my first tour. Alright, I've got three coppers. Um, what is there left to do? Hey, wait a minute, there's... A beetle. The beetle's shell reflects, reflects light in a colorful blue-green glow. I've seen this before, but I don't think I've ever seen one within Kamiya. I think that's what Rio was spotting, right? Didn't she say there was something here? Like, glittering or whatever? Alright, what can I do with it? Ooh, maybe I can enchant... Or, wait. Oh. Bye. Come here, beetle. Come back. It's okay. Okay, so it's going to be like that, huh? Get down from there! Uh, I don't think Beetle... <laughs> Dang it, I don't think a Beetle's going to pay attention to what you say. Uh, stick? That won't give me the Beetle. Hmm. This bottle's full, isn't it? Yeah. Wait a minute, who... Again, who needed this bottle cap? Was it you? Or not needed, but wanted. Want this? No, thanks. Oh. Do you? Excuse me, but would you like this? Nope. How about a stick? Nope. Hmm. Alright, what can I do? Wait a minute, can I... Can I pick up this poster? Or flyer? Today's special, all charms, only five coppers. Uh, visit the house of Ixel. Ixel. The house of Ixel! And right next door is the house of Microsoft Word. Alright, so this can be used to poison myself. I have no idea what to do with a stick. A uh, bottle of goat wine. So it's shit. And a bottle cap for somebody. Hmm. See if these people have anything new to say. What about you, you dick? That you're a whore, desperate for a client. Okay, we're back to this. I suspect this is what he wants, but... Alright, actually, I guess we're just looking at you that you're incredibly stupid. Thankfully, you saved me the embarrassment of asking whether this was true by proving it when you began to speak. At his offhand retort, the glow in his eyes brightens a little, and his smile seems to grow. Okay, so he feeds off being insulted. I hope you realized that I spoke in such a manner so that one such as yourself could understand it. I have been more polite and su I'd have been more polite and subtle, but I wanted to save you the embarrassment of having to ask what I meant. But now you must be embarrassed, for you misunderstood me. 
If you had understood me properly, you've realized that what I actually meant was that even if I was a whore, I'd never degrade myself with asking for business from you. Even the whores in this city have some standards, you surely understand. I think I could find someone who could tolerate you if we went to the dirtiest, poorest part of the slums. The sound of laughter broadens his smile, so his teeth show a big, genuine smile. He seems to be enjoying this. Oh, how kind. You'll give me a tour of your place? How very thoughtful. I really appreciate that. It's lovely to see that even a pathetic excuse for humanity like yourself can bring themselves to think about someone other than themselves. You seem to think highly of yourself, so at least someone always thinks of you. That's all you've got? I thought you may have actually had something clever to retort with. I guess I was mistaken. Perhaps you're too angry at me to come up with some clever reply? Nax seems to be quite interested now, as though he's wondering what the reply to this last statement will be. <laughs> as though I'd get cross at such childish banter. It's amusing, I guess, but I can't imagine anybody actually getting angry as a result. Strange. Everybody else in this city seems to have taken offense whenever I have thrown a little jibe their way. I was, beginning, I was beginning to fear I'd not find a single person with, with a sense of humor in this place. It really has been lovely to find someone else who can indulge in a little harmless jesting without letting their emotions overtake their intelligence. Then why continue if it makes people mad? Because I'm a student, and I'm studying people. I am learning their weaknesses, the exceptions, the way their minds work. And this for me is a study. Before you go, allow me to give you this as a thank you. This conversation has been educational and inspiring. He pulls two copper coins f uh, from one of the sleeves of his robe. His head bows, uh, bows, bows politely as he... Oh my god. Let me try that again. He pulls two copper coins from one of the sleeves of his robe. Uh, his head bows politely as he hands it over and then raises again to make eye contact once more. I sincerely hope I meet more people such as yourself here before I travel to another place. Aren't you worried that this research may cause trouble? Yeah, I'm pretty sure if he continues this, he's going to get bashed in the fucking head by someone who doesn't like him. Aren't you worried that this research may cause trouble? It could be quite dangerous if you tried it on the wrong person. Oh, that's really no concern, you see. I'm quite able to defend myself without having to resort to violence. That's some magic you've got there. Magic? Oh no, that was mere trickery. There's no magic involved. What? Although to be certain, there is little difference if you do not know the secret of how something is done. Magic, however, requires a degree of earnesty. I certainly couldn't maintain trickery. Uh, oh, uh, a degree of earnesty I certainly couldn't maintain. Trickery is far easier for someone of my disposition. Whoops, clicked out. Okay. Right, well now I have five coppers. Hmm. But don't I need 10? I'm pretty sure I need 10. Can I brew the tea? Good idea, but I need a resurrection charm before I go crazy with killing myself. Okay, fair enough. I don't suppose I could sell my sword? I am a sell sword after all, right? Ha ha ha. I won't be needing my sword today. Okay. Whoops, I did not mean to go back inside. I meant to go to the plaza. Alright, I believe it was ten. Copper. Let me talk to Yiktor again. I'm back. Where can I get a pass from? Yep. Ten coppers, okay. Anything to say to you? Nope, nope, nope. Nope. Alright, how do I get that friggin' beetle? Yeah, throw a leaf at it. A 
there's like one pixel where I can click on the beetle. Nope. Wait, can I like pick up this bottle and throw it at it? I have no use for it. Oh! No sense letting it go to waste, just laying around. What was that? Oh, it's a feather. Don't need another. Best not to fiddle with such powerful magic. It looks to be an Orvin feather. Uh, I found it lying next to the chalked ruin on the ground. No doubt it was part of a ritual of some sort. Ooh. Does that mean it's enchanted? Maybe the feather's enchanted because it was part of a ritual? I don't think using it on the beetle is going to do anything. Nah. Alright, well, before I check to see whether this feather is enchanted, I will be right back. Alright, let's talk to Emba. And see if this feather is enchanted. Alright, let me try doing it through dialogue. Hmm. Okay, I guess it has nothing to do with enchantment. In that case, what am I doing with a feather? I can't think of anyone who would want this. Oops, let me go back. Maybe the poet could use it for inspiration? I mean, it was sitting right in front of him, so I wouldn't think that he would want it. Nope. Huh. All right, what about Bants? Would she want it? Anything else you need delivered? If you've got a minute, you could run this ring down to Nax. He's just down the street. Red robes, pale skin. You can't miss him. Alright, simple enough. And while I'm here, let me try to use this on her. Interested in buying this? It's not worth anything to me, sorry. Damn it. I'm not exactly sure what sort of ring this is, but, Bance, but if Bance is selling it, then chances are it is enchanted. Must be careful not to lose it. It is probably worth a fair bit. Okay, let me take this to Emba before I actually give it to Nax. I think it needs to be a green stone, so yeah, this probably isn't going to work. Nope, okay. Yeah, she's going to show me something with a green stone. I guess it can't just be any enchanted item. Here you go, you massive douche. Enjoy. He looks at me, reaches out, and takes the ring. You're allowed to say thanks, you know. He looks at me with a bored, unimpressed expression, and flicks me a copper coin before turning his attention back to whatever it was he was staring at. Wonderful person. Okay, I just need four more. Now, what am I doing with this feather? Well, you look like a cat creature, so you've got to like feathers, right? How about leaving a black feather on your victim? I hadn't even thought of that. Blacks can advise death, and the birds that flock to the corpse on a battlefield all have black feathers. That's a nice idea. Definitely something I'll keep in mind. Thanks for the suggestion, la suggestion, lass. I do appreciate it. Here, take this. Let me know if you have any other ideas. Okay, just need three more. Um, you could leave a bottle cap on them? 
How about leaving Ferryman's ale ball caps on the eyes of the bodies? It's a twist on the gold coin tradition, and a direct reference to the Ferryman of the Sticks. That's a fine idea. I like that one. I'll definitely consider it, Last, Thanks for the suggestion. Cool. If you have any, any more motif ideas, be sure to let me know. Two more. Uh, shove a stick up their ass? Interested in this? No. Okay. Shove a bottle up their ass? No. I think my ideas have run out. Yep. Hmm. Two more. Have you spotted anything new, Rhea? What can you see? Somebody's writing graffiti on the statue of Firetail, Firetail the Betrayer. Hmm. A anything else? Oh, wait, what was that? Somebody blowing glass. Looks like they're making a vase. Somebody, yeah, same one. A new tree has been planted outside the Harbor Master's office. Whoops, didn't. Alright, I right, saw that one. There's one more, I think. A small child just stole a potion from a merchant. Okay. City official feeding one of the lamps. Alright, I think I'm good. Can I go to the nickel bar yet? Nope. Hmm. Blowing energy. I can feel a strange sensation. Warm, tingling, almost buzzing. It feels like some sort of magic. If I had something else made of wood, I could probably transfer the energy to it like Emba showed me. Ooh. Well, it just so happens, I do. I press the tip of the stick against the glowing energy and try to focus on what Emba showed me. I try to feel the particles all around me and all the... And all the tiny little pieces I saw before. I feel the bark surrounding the wood of my stick, feel the place where the sap flowed through, keeping the wood alive. I also feel the energy in the tree, the strange force that isn't like anything else around me. I pull at that energy, urging it into the bark, around the wood, trying to lure it in. Slowly, I feel the energy respond, and I get to feel it, understand it better. I concentrate it on it more firmly with my mind, as though grasping it, and it flows steadily from the tree into the bark of the stick. The energy fades from the tree, and now sits at the tip of my new wand, a blue ember as though the stick was burning with some kind of invisible cool flame without being consumed. I remove the stick from the tree and slowly let my concentration. The energy stays trapped in the bark of the wand, ready to be unleashed as soon as the bark is torn. Neat. Did I just kill the tree, basically? Did I just, like, take all of its life energy? I don't actually remember what the leaves look like up here, but I'm pretty sure they, it wasn't falling apart. Or maybe it was. Because, yeah, the description's the same. They're falling off and they're used for cigarettes. I don't know. I wasn't really observant with what the tree looked like, so I don't remember. Anyway. The end of the stick glows blue like an ember, as though there was an invisible flame burning at the end of it. It burns cool, though, and I can't see an actual... And I can't see an actual flame. Alright, uh, well, it's still not a green stone, so I guess I'll just try to sell it. Interested in buying this? A wand? I don't recognize this. What sort is it? Oh, I'm not actually sure, to be honest. I... Oh, whoops, I clicked through it. Really? Uh, really now? How interesting. Without knowing what it does, it's hard to put a price on it, but I'll offer you two coppers... To take it, if you like. Sounds fair. I have a little use for such a thing myself. That's a deal, then. Sweet! Now I have enough. Alright, Yiktor. Print me up a pass. You want me to get you one now, then? Sure, here's the coins. 
There you go, lass. Try to keep out of trouble when you're in there. Trouble? Me? We were in the same mercenary company for three years. I know you, Moira. You always find trouble. Take care, Yktor. Aye, lass. And, you, and yourself. Alright, to Temple District. Ah, there you are. Excuse me? I was asked to give this to you by a group of people that were here earlier. She hands me three copper coins. Wait, someone wanted to give me money? What? Who? Thank you, but what is this for? Apparently there was a bit of a mix-up with some soldiers and we had gotten confused which head belonged to which body. They say you helped point them in the right direction by checking the skin color for them, and we got all of the three soldiers back to their proper bodies. Oh! So I did help them. Cool. Each, each of them asked. Excuse me. Each of them asked me to give you a copper coin, and so I have been waiting for someone of your description to go by. Ah, glad to hear they got the mess all sorted out. So, are you a lizard person? Robes give her away as the priestess of the House of Ixal straight away. It's a bit odd to see a member of a temple out on the street and not inside, though. Sheets. Before the discovery of bioluminescent lights, Kamiya used to rely on electricity for her illumination. These days, the cables are obsolete. Nobody uses electricity, but they remain in the city as a leftover from the old technology. They're a decent place to hang the laundry out to dry, though. <laughs> so electricity was old? Uh, is old at this point? Interesting. Because so far, the only powered thing I've seen is just lights. What about, like, machinery? Are those... bio-powered as well? Litter. Just some litter. The streets of Kamiya are never totally clean. I don't want to go collecting all the litter in the city. It'll take me forever. Fair enough. Pot. Classy. I think I'd be in trouble with the priests if I mess with their decorations. Banners. I'm not exactly sure why temples feel the need to hang these from the entranceways. Presumably they're to attract people's attention, but with the but with the way that priests think it could be wait, but with the way priests think it could be for anything. Wait. Oh, oh, I was reading that wrong. But with the way priests think it could be for anything. Idol. The hell kind of an idol is that? That's a very strange face. An idol of Ixal. Legend has it that she was a goddess of great beauty. This idol doesn't represent this facet of her character very well. <laughs> no, it does not. It definitely does not. It looks like a freaky robot head, basically. Ooh, greenstone. And a very sad-seeming person. And a stripper at... The entranceway to a church, priest, place, temple? She looks like a stripper. A greenstone, a fairly common sort of rock. Well, I'll just take that. Kelly. This young girl sits huddled in filthy rags off to the side of a building. She's clearly a street urchin of some sort. Hmm. Hello there. Hello, ma'am. Could you spare a single copper for a hungry beggar? Well, at the moment, I don't... Wait, 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 wait. I do need to buy something. I need to buy the charm, right? Shit, how much was the charm? Two copper? I think it was two copper. Right, and I have three, so sure. Here you go. Oh, thank you so much, ma'am. You have no idea how much I appreciate this. It's fine, miss. I don't have much money either. Sometimes people do everything they can to keep it that way, too. Tell me, Moira. I can't tell how you... I can't tell you how grateful I am. I haven't eaten for two days. Well, I'm glad I could help out. Alright, let's talk to the stripper, and then... I guess take the greenstone back to Emba? Alright, who the hell are you? Morning, Astus. 
Moira, so good to see you again, sweetie. Good to see you too, Astus. How's things? You know me, not much changes. Always waiting for somebody rich and horny to come along and give me all of their money in exchange for a little bit of my affection. I'd be a very rich person who could pay... Uh, it'd be a very rich person who could pay you more in coppers than you could repay with affection, Astus. You know it, sweetie. Of course, I save most of my affection for you, Moira. I honestly don't know why, Astus. You could have your pick of anybody around here. That wasn't entirely true. I had some idea about half a year ago one of Astus's clients had beaten her badly and left her bleeding in an alley. Ugh. I came across her, tracked down the person who did it, and killed them. Only time I've ever killed anybody for free in my life. I took her back to my place, not the first time I'd done that, but for a different reason than the other times. It took her a week to recover from the ordeal, a week that she spent curled up, crying in my arms. After that, she'd always been somewhat devoted to me. Anyway, sweetie, how can I help you today? How's business? It's been a pretty quiet day, not that I mind. The weather is beautiful, and I love this city. I'd be happy to stand here all day, taking in the sights, even if I wasn't looking for clients. Uh, oh, it, yeah. I thought I read that wrong, and then I realized I read it correctly. <laughs> and when a client does come along, I get to make them feel nice, and I get to eat and pay my rent. Everybody wins. You're always so positive about everything, Astus. I swear you always cheer me up when I talk to you. How could I not be happy when I get to talk to my most favorite person ever, sweetie? I know you say that to everyone, Astus. But I only ever mean it when I say it to you, my love. I can't believe you're still wearing my old pair of boots. I'd never throw these away, Moira, no matter what. I really needed these when you gave them to me, and I really appreciated that. Besides, you never come and see me anymore, so I need something to re remember you by. Oh, Astus, don't be like that. Just teasing, sweetie. You know I love you no matter what. I'm kind of like half voice acting, half not. I'm not really sure what to do. I I'm not a voice actor. <laughs> but it also feels wrong to say with no emotion at all. So I'm kind of like in a weird middle ground. Hopefully it doesn't come off as strange. I don't know. Have you had any more trouble? Not that you took care of that last jerk, sweetie. Just let me know if you have any more trouble like that. Moira, my love, I heard what you did to that guy. The whole city heard. People are scared to even look at me the wrong way now. Well, so they should be. Nobody picks on my friends. So, there's nothing I can help you with? Not at the moment, sweetie. Okay, farewell. Hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. What is it? You look like you need to unwind a little. Why not come with me and let me take your mind off things for a while? A kind offer, Astus, but I don't think that's a good idea. What's up, sweetie? You don't fancy me Fancy me anymore? No, it's not that... <clears throat> Damn it, I have something stuck in my throat. Hold on. Oh god, it doesn't stop. That's right. Uh, I care about you, sweetie. Really, I do. You never let anybody look after you, and I want to remind you that I'm here for you. Now I'm going to take a drink of water. You shouldn't let yourself be involved with me, Astus. I'm a mercenary. I get paid to kill. Nobody should feel anything for somebody like me. And I get paid to fuck. <laughs> the whole world looks down on us until they're horny or they have a problem they can't solve. And then they eagerly meet us, look us in the eye, and remember our names. If we were the only bad ones, and everyone else was pure and noble, we'd never have any business. We're merely the tools, the hammers for their debauchery, so they have somebody to look down on. We're no worse than anybody else in this place. You deserve affection as much as any other in this city. Hmm. I'm sorry, Astus, but I can't. You see, I need to kill myself and resurrect myself and take my gold for a job we did in the afterlife and then come back and stuff. So I'm a bit busy. She looks at me with a sad look in her eyes and pulls out some coins and presses them into my palm. At least buy yourself something decent to eat then, Moira. You look awful and it kills me to see you like this. 
Astus, I can't take... Moira, please. Stop being... So, oh, that's a misspell. Stop being stop stubborn and let somebody do something nice for you for once. Tears form in her eyes and I feel stupid. It hurts me to see her so upset because of me. Astus, I'm sorry. Wipe your eyes. I will protest no more. You're the sweetest friend anybody could have. I just wish you'd let your friends look after you sometimes, Moira. Don't let me hold you up. It was good to see you again. Thank you, Astus. It, it's good to see you again, too. Okay, before... Now, what the hell? Let's go in the temple first, and then I'll talk to Emba on the way back. Why, hello there. There's that creepy face again. I thought Ixal was a goddess of great beauty. Either priests lie, or they need to find a better sculptor. <laughs> no kidding. Quorm. Kale! That was the guy that wanted the bottle cap, right? Unfortunately, I gave it away. Chandelier. As though having the most enormous windows possible doesn't give enough light, they also had to have a fancy chandelier hanging from the ceiling. Not a good idea. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, don't don't touch it. Couldn't touch it even if you wanted to. Huge windows with a fantastic view of the city. I bet when nobody is around, the priests watch the horrors in the streets from here. <laughs> Perverts. Banner. Wow, what is it with these priests and their banners? Maybe the banner merchant went out of business and they bought all his stock? No kidding. There's a lot of banners. I can't believe how long this game is. I don't think I mentioned it before, but it's totally free. And it's really good. And it's over two hours long. Damn. Stand. What a subtle way to make yourself feel superior to the congregation. An older looking priest. Priest. Sour faced and perched up in the stand. He looks like he is concentrating on something. A serious-looking priest with the mark of the House of Ixal tattooed on his forehead. Excel, Excelle, Ixal, I have no idea. Excel. Undoubtedly, this is the main priest of this temple. Alright, let's talk to him. Good morning. Welcome to the House of Ixal. How may I help you? I need a resurrection charm. Charms are five copper coins. Oh shit, it's five. Please return when you have more money, and we'll be happy to help you. Oh, God damn it! Oh, maybe I shouldn't have given that coin away to the beggar. Oh, well, I'll find it somewhere. What is Ixal a goddess of? Ixal is the goddess of pure truth. To her, nothing is more important than pure, unaltered truth. Of course, the gods do not interfere with the, interfere with the affairs of mortals anymore. But the powers granted to the House of Exal were originally granted by her, and thus we still serve in her name. Even if we do not directly serve her. What do you do here at the temple? I am the pastor here. I deal with the, mi the mildly complex problems people bring to the House of Exal. Let's say Yul, outside the temple, deals with simple everyday issues, and Quirms in the stand deals with the more specialized stuff. More specialized stuff? Oh, sure. People get themselves into all sorts of strange situations. Moving souls from one body to another, some of the more powerful enchantments like giving sentience to inanimate objects, and all sorts of other things. Last week, we put a man's soul into a leaf. W what As long as people are willing to pay, and it doesn't go against the doctrine of Exal, we're happy to serve. A man's soul into a leaf. Okay. Hello there. Hello, what is it? What are you actually doing? Every minute I am not distracted from it, I spend weaving blessings into this building. Its holiness is maintained by our vigilance. What do you do? I specialize in blessings, whether on people, items, or for potions. I invent new blessings each month and plan to make an almanac detailing them soon. Farewell, then. 
Okay, to Emba with the greenstone. I have a greenstone, Emba. Hold it out in your palm, child. Now, focus on seeing what you saw before. I concentrate on the stone and search for that feeling I felt before. Once more, the world around me becomes a seething mass of particles, and I see Emba hold out a copper coin. I look at the coin and look at the greenstone in my hand and realize that they are much the same, except that the greenstone has some impurities. Understanding what I am to do, I focus on the impurities and will them out of the greenstone with my thoughts. Slowly at first, but then quite steadily, the stone becomes pure copper. I then urge the buzzing copper particles down into a disc shape, trying to match the coin Emba is holding. After much effort, I am left with an almost perfect replica of the coin in her hand. You see? By, by being able to see how things are made, we can alter them, copy them, create new things from them. The key to being able to affect the world is being able to understand it first, just like with anything. Thank you. I think I understand now. Well, cool, I just made copper. Whoops. Good morning. How may I help you? Well, I need a resurrection charm. And this time I actually have the money. Certainly. Here you are. Perfect. And I shall require one of the hairs on your head. Uh, okay. It's to bind the charm to your individual spirit. Sure. There you go. And here's the charm for you. May Exal watch over you. See ya. May Exal walk with you. Oh, hi. Hello there, Kale. Who are you? Now, Kale, there's no way to speak to your goddess. You are in my temple. I will remind you to show some respect when you address me. Ixal? I thought... Didn't the gods withdraw from the material plane hundreds of years ago? We did indeed, but I have need of your help. I need the mortal woman you just served to visit me in my domain. Can you not just summon her there? No, I am bound by the terms of the arrangement we made centuries ago, which state that the gods can do no such thing unless the mortal in question wishes for it to occur also. Mortal rites, we call them, whereby a god may not meddle with the mind or soul of mortal creature. It's a minor inconvenience, but we shall respect this, and we will make her want to come and visit me. How do you propose we do this? Here's what I want you to do. Hmm. I wonder what they're planning. Anyway, let's go brew myself a, uh, a bitter poison. I mean, what if I just went to her domain right now? Hold on, let me save. But wait, what is her domain? Is it the mortuary? I mean, that's where I first saw her, but I don't know if that's actually her domain. Uh, let's try it. It really doesn't make any sense for this to be her domain. No. Okay. Yeah, let's uh let's go ahead and kill myself.
All right, here we go. Right, time to make this poison tea. I hope this stuff kills me fast. I don't fancy spending a week in agony, and I need to be dead in time to catch up to Jerhal. I'll let the leaf mix in with the water for a bit so I get the full effect. I wonder what it's like, the afterlife. I've sent God I've sent gods to know how many people there. It's if my journal is to be believed, but I've never really thought about what awaits them. I mean sure, I've killed people, that's part of being a mercenary, but I do try to avoid it if possible. Most jobs can be achieved through more subtle means, really. According to my journal, I wasn't always such a pacifist. Well, I guess it was a different time. These days, I get so little work that I never really need to kill anybody anyway. Well, my delicious poison tea should be ready. I hope this doesn't taste too foul. I take a sip of the liquid. Ow, fuck that is hot. Gods, I should have let it cool down first. I guess I, too, I was too distracted by the idea of dying. What a stupid thing to do. Great, now my tongue is burnt and my mouth tastes like it's been pissed in. Nice going, Moira. <laughs> well, that took effect fast. Well, I can't see a river here. And nobody said anything about a blue cavern with strange glass globes on the ceiling when you die. Huh. A floating blue door. Never seen anything like that before. Well, maybe this leads to the sticks. Interesting place. Those voices switching from left and right and moving back and forth almost make me dizzy. It's weird. Strange light. I wonder who put it there. Alright, through the door. It's the only place I can go. Hmm. I have options. Twist the handle. It won't turn. Stupid thing must be locked. Pull the door. Come on, move! It's not even budging a tiny bit. Push. Can't budge it. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Can I do anything with the lights? As I stare into the glow within the tube, I feel a memory entering my thoughts. Not one of my memories, but someone else's memory. As it fills my senses, however, I feel myself adopting the memory as my own. It's like finding a forgotten but vaguely familiar recollection, even though it's the first time I've had it. Hmm. Whoa, what's happening? Footprints. Someone has passed here recently. I thought I had heard something. These footprints seem familiar to me somehow. They still possess the faint essence of the boots that left them. I wonder whose feet made them. Who the hell was that? And where the hell am I? Hi. Huh, this could almost be Camia. Except the architecture is too old, and the air smells wrong. No idea where I am. This is definitely not one of my memories. It doesn't feel the slightest bit familiar. I wonder whose memory it is. Split barrel. Whatever the barrel was filled with, it's fizzing and seems to be slowly eating away at the flagstones. Ugh. Smell even from here is eye-watering. Sounds like acid. <laughs> 